All right, what is going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler and today we are out here at the always awesome Three Peaks here in Cedar City, Utah. I don't come up here nearly as much as I should and I rarely shoot videos like this while I'm here. So I'm super excited today. It's gonna be an awesome one. And I brought out a freshly built truck that really brings new life back to the G-Speed. So let's take a peek at it. Previously, I had this G-Speed V3 on AR45 straight axles, and uh, I saw a Facebook trade come up. Someone wanted to swap AR45 portals for capper axles, so SCX-10-3 portals for capper axles. And I went ahead and jumped on that, pulled the portals out of my base camp, and I decided to trade those out for these capper axles, which means I basically did a rebuild on the G-Speed, converting it to four-link servo on axle, and also threw some other goodies in there too like the Operation 11 Charlie Limited Edition Reefs Raw 500 Servo is in this truck currently. And we've also got a Hobbywing Axe 3300 KV. Jumped up to 2.2 inch wheels with some cut and shut tires from Ally Express. Cut and shut means that I added, oh, an extra 20% of the tire to it. So I cut the factory tire, opened it up more, glue a new piece in there to make it larger. So it's still the same width, but it's taller overall and it increases the wheel diameter too. Uh, that's actually a service that I offer for BFG crawlers, and those are available on my website, westdesertwheeler.com. You can click on over there and learn more about them there. Now, these tires are from Ally Express and direct from China. As near as I can tell, there's no, like, this isn't a copied tire. This is actually an original tire, as far as I can tell. They are definitely mimicked after the Maxxis Trepidor tires, which I think have a cool design to them for sure. Got a super aggressive sidewall, that's always fun to see. But I don't know of the like real name brand tire that these would have copied, so I don't feel too bad buying these. Whereas a lot of those times, like these guys will straight up rip off J Concepts or uh, who is it, Voodoo, and literally just put the J Concepts name on a knockoff tire, which I think is total bullshit. They shouldn't do that. But you know, that's how China works sometimes. Anyway, these tires are legit, I like them. The compound is very soft, and also the tread lugs on here are different heights. I don't want to fall off of this one, actually. As this little, le this little line right here, we're picking up a lot of elevation very quickly. But the tread lugs are taller and shorter in certain spots of the tread pattern, which is kind of cool, and it makes these things really loud. You can really hear them biting for traction, especially with a truck with a lot of overdrive. Like, I've run these on my Capra quite a bit, and you can hear those lugs just folding and biting as it drives along. There we go. Always awesome steering angle out of the axial capper axles. The rock here in Three Peaks is crazy grippy and you can pull off some real wild angles and lines. As we're checking out this G-Speed, pull off some good stuff right here. There's a ledge off the back left and that's what's holding us up. There we go. Tons of clearance on this build. I did have to do some excess trimming to get these uh, bigger front tires to clear the body a little more on the cliffhanger, which, oh, by the way, I came up with a name for this project. Instead of the cliffhanger, it is the ledge dangler. So that's the name of this guy right now on the capper axles and whatnot. But did a metallic fluorescent color on this. Pretty cool. Really pops in the sun. Another great detail on this build, as always, I have some D's Company shock bands on this truck. I only have them on the front of this build, but they are a matching orange uh, shock band end, I guess you could call it. The mounting portion of the shock band is orange as well. Went with a gray band itself. They're tucked behind the shocks on these, so they're a little tricky to see in there, but they help hold the nose down on steep climbs but they still allow full articulation of the suspension. An awesome product by a local kid here. Check out D's company on Instagram if you wanna learn more. He's also on Facebook as well and that's how he takes his orders. But tons and tons of color varieties. He's now 3D printing his own rod ends, not rod ends, band ends. And uh, you can make them match your truck along with the band color too. Had to do a little U-turn here of what we just drove down, it's actually a really fun climb as well. Just all these little ledges to navigate and try and get your tire placement to grab traction where you want and keep making forward progress. 
grab traction on that front left to where it'll pull. There it's going. And then we're gonna cut back over to the right. See if we can get that front right up on the ledge. Slowly working our way over there. It's just got the shoulder of the tire on the rock. There it is, just had to slow crawl it. Tire finally got a good bite. Now we can turn out of it. And then we're gonna go up and over this little formation here. We'll see if we get a bite of out of our sliders or not. Nope, too much clearance. And we can spin right around and come back. And by the way, the approach and departure angles on this truck are ridiculous. Like I can run into an overhang ledge and this thing will clear it with the front nose because those bigger tires poke out more in the front. I also stretched the wheelbase on this from the uh, previous setup. So I'm now at like 13 inch wheelbase using Hardcore RC uh, high clearance links in here. I went with the stainless steel Hardcore RC links. I don't mind a little bit of weight in the links down low. It's technically unsprung weight, I don't know. 3,300 KV. Got the juice when you need it to bring yourself out of a nose wheelie situation. It definitely has the spice when you want it. There's just so many good lines out here. Like anywhere you point it, there's something to drive over. And it's just about endless amounts of these little notches to drive up in, stay balanced, hover over, drive through, get sideways in, whatever you want to do. Make weird random turns for no reason, just come up with lines on your own. So typically I go out and drive in Sand Hollow, which is really great for creating trail systems through the canyons. Three Peaks is really more of like obstacle country. Just you can sit in a 50 foot square area and just play on all the random formations, run them in all sorts of different ways. So this was a great place for competitions in my, in my opinion. which I plan on hosting more in the future in the North vs. South series. Northern Utah vs. Southern Utah RC crawling competition. That's way too steep, but why not just give it a bump and see what happens. Pretty stable. Now I definitely like the capper axles for the stability that it provides on side hills. Because this truck is so much wider, then, uh-oh, didn't get the bite we were looking for. Let's see if we can back up and reset. Okay, now our rear is much lower. But we're going to try and turn uphill here. Uh, yep, it's going to do it. There she goes. Awesome stability from the capper axles, plus high clearance and great steering angle. I really like these axles a lot. That's why they're on so many of my builds. This truck looks awesome. I'm really enjoying it. It's driving great. This is its first run. I haven't even, I didn't even backyard test this one. It came straight off the bench at 1 a.m. last night and I drove straight up to Three Peaks in the morning. I'm doing the same line again, just cause it's fun. Killing it. All right, so I tried this line off camera. We're gonna see if we can get it on camera. Try and make the transfer up and out of here. Just trying to get this front right to bite and pull it up and over. Not the move here. It's tricky. It's always hard making a turn out of a crack like this. Typically, I try and dip the tire on the rear. I dip the side that I want to turn. So I try and get my back left low. Uh, I think we just killed our spur there, guys. Well, 
think that's going to be the quick end to this video. Well, unfortunately, after a closer examination, uh, it turns out that we killed a transmission gear is really what happened. The spur gear is just fine. So one of the internal trans gears is the pinion spinning. And if I put too much pressure on the tires, the drive shafts won't spin, but the pinion still spins and it's making a horrible clicking sound. So something internally in the transmission. That's going to end my day with this truck. So it's going to end this video, but I'm going to go record more with different trucks that I have here. Should still be a great time on the rocks. Be sure to hit the affiliate links down below. I would greatly appreciate it. That's how you can help support me here on the channel. I am doing this full time and I would greatly appreciate if you guys are buying something online, use that link. It helps me out and it'll help me keep me out here on the rocks. I hope you guys enjoy the content. Drop a comment down below. We will see you in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.